They read, on average, 60 books a year. That's five a month, which I think is quite impressive. I don't know, how many books do you read a year? Or read a well, month, prob- you know, prob- prob- Probably less than a handful, but I think these CEOs that are doing this have too much time on their hands and they're not running their businesses properly. <laughs> but damn in comment. I think we don't take, spend enough time outside the business. We go to a networking event and we don't know anybody there. So the first thing that we've got to do is go and talk to a stranger. And so many of us are like, whoa, this is just like totally out of my comfort zone. <laughs> what am I going to do? And I think, you know, we, we get those beliefs programmed into us, don't we, Melvin? To step out beyond that um, limiting belief that you have. So hello and welcome from me, Patrick Twitchett, and... And from me, Melvin Manning. Very good. And you can see um, on this month's October 2020 broadcast, um, we're both uh, donning our hats because we had comments about hats in the, the clips online. And uh, someone said, oh, wear the hats. So we're wearing the hats. Oh, so we'd like your feedback on the hats, whether it makes us look completely stupid or... Or it's okay. And if you're listening to the podcast, you will have not have a clue. And you won't even know what hats we're wearing. So there adds a little bit of mystery. So um, welcome to Case. Uh, Case act is actually connecting and supporting entrepreneurs. Uh, I don't know if you spotted the acronym there. But we run open and closed mastermind groups and run this monthly broadcast unedited on video and audio where we want to give you the listener some valuable input to help you on your journey so we don't edit it at all and we've been very courageous to try to do video and audio at the same time so uh, it, it, it gets a little bit like we have to make little prompts a bit like you know when you turn on that um, the thing for the blind Melvin where it's uh, audio prompts for the blind have you ever switched that on I've not done that, no. Oh, no, yeah. So if you're watching a, a film or something, you switch it on and it says, and, and now Thor takes his hammer and smashes oh. the Hulk in the face or whatever. And uh, it, it's quite a sort of a, a bland, plain voice. I, it, I'd, I'd actually like to do that myself and really emphasise it, you know. Like, well, you, can always emphasize, you can always emphasise an adjustment to your hat. But, yeah, yeah, you could do a bit of that, but... Well, you don't see the man wearing his hat when he's doing it, uh, But, you know, if he sort of said, oh, and you see Thor grabs his hand and he smashes the Hulk in the face, that would just sound so much better on audio prompting, I think. But anyway, um, back to what we do. Each month, we discuss the content of a personal development book where the phrase, readers are leaders, is very true. Um, I think the fact is that a poll revealed that the top CEOs, and I hate acronyms, that's my pet hate, so CEO is Chief Executive Officer, they read, on average, 60 books a year. That's five a month, which I think is quite impressive. I don't know, how many books do you read a year? Or read a month? Probably less than a handful, but I think these CEOs that are doing this have too much time on their hands and they're not running their businesses properly. <laughs> a damning comment. Uh, Absolutely. So, you know, g- give me the argument against. <laughs> too, much, too much time playing golf. I, I think they're taking the time out of their business, Melvin, to think about their business. They are. They are. To think and plan ahead. And, and I, I know I keep mentioning it, but... Mr. Gates, Bill Gates, um, they did this documentary on Netflix and he literally goes a week away to a private little cabin with a load of books and he thinks about what he's going to be doing for the year ahead. And I just I just really thrive on that. I just think that's brilliant. I think we don't take, spend enough time outside the business 
And I know we was on a call earlier, Melvin. We we talked about that, didn't we? Early we did indeed. We morning. did indeed. Yes. It's a little bit well, later this morning. I have to say, yeah, having, having, having read, you know, in a limited way over the years, uh, as I've matured, um, I am reading a lot more. Yeah, yeah, I must admit, I, I don't know whether it's just me, I really struggle to read. It, it takes me ages and ages to really read and absorb a book. I'm, at the moment, I'm looking to try and get into um, audio books because uh, I think I can listen more on the go and I'd probably absorb more. You know, I can't be doing a a, a task that I have to really concentrate on. But if I'm just doing a mundane task, I find I absorb a lot more. We're listening to a lot of podcasts, but I think video yeah. or audio books, were, um, I'm really... So if, if anyone's got any thoughts on that and wants to put that in the comments below, that would be fantastic because we want to we wanna build up the comments. If you put a comment, that would actually double the amount of comments that we get. So we yeah. appreciate well, I, I just, just for the benefit of our, our listeners and our viewers, uh, you, know, you referring to things like Krakenori is not what we're really talking about. What we're talking about is proper audiobooks. Krakenori. <laughs> no, Krakenori. What's Krakenori? It's the naughty stuff. Oh, oh now Melvin's now. After, 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 after 11 o'clock stuff. Oh, uh, no, well, you see, I, that's, that's where I'm so naive, I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> and, and I'm glad, I'm glad. And I don't want to... I don't wanna, divulge with it because YouTube will pick up some sort of explicit thing and, and label our content X-rated and, and uh, cut our audience even further from, from down to two to one. So that would be really worrying. Um, okay, so um, we, that's why we want to talk about these books anyway, because they say readers are leaders. So to those joining us today, just a quick break away from our discussion there, just to let you know that if you wanted to know more or be a part of the Case Mastermind community, all you need to do is follow the links in the notes below to our website to find out more. And I'll see you there in case you didn't already know. Now let's go back the discussion. Melvin always likes to discuss a new word. Now I'm putting you up Melvin because yes. in episode one Melvin um, was going to tell us in episode two what the word persiflage meant and you, you got so carried away and excited about talking about this book, your book, um, in, in episode two that you forgot to tell us. So I'd like you to take the time now, uh, Melvin, to tell us about Percy Flash. Really? Out of our misery. You really want me to tell you? Well, Percy Flash, it's, it's only a lightweight type of word, really. I mean, the actual uh, proper linguistic meaning for it is light and slightly contemptuous mockery. So it's basically making fun, making light of something. Oh, so, so are it we comes, it, it comes with a, a, a yeah, it comes with a common word called banter. Yes. So, so is there, is there like a you know? Could we say that we're persiflaging? Is, is well, I, I I could say that I do because you're a lot more of the straight man, whereas I'm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm more, I'm more looking at the light side of things. So I'm bad cop, you're good cop. <laughs> <laughs> so Patrick, what do you have in the way of linguistic wonderment? Well, no, I'm only on, um, I'm only on Peter and John book 3A. So <laughs> I, I think the words that I could contribute are quite basic. So I leave all the big, bigger words to you. Any, any word over nine letters, I, I sort of, Right off. Well, we'll, we'll throw one out there, shall we? Yeah, yeah, I'll let you throw one out there because you're, you're the scrabble man, I think, as far as... Okay, well, obviously, to those that are enjoying this and have done more than the few minutes that we've spoken so far, 
Let's talk about the word garrulous. Garrulous. Garrulous, right, yes. Right. And we can reveal that in our next episode. All right, I will leave people to the home. Do you, are you one of these people, Melvin, that sort of sits down and, and finds a new word every day? Me on occasion, yes. But, uh, many moons ago, there was a challenge in the office uh, back in the day where we would come up with a, you know, being involved in the advertising and marketing world, we would have copywriters. And the challenge was to, to find an unusual word a week. Oh. And, and, then, and, 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 and then bring that word into a conversation. <laughs> thus, thus throwing the listener. <laughs> now, garrulous is a fairly average word. It's not exactly um, something that isn't used on a regular basis, but it can be used quite regularly. Okay. However, well, next, next month when you do it, Melvin, you'll have to, to throw it in the initial conversation well, and, and then put your usual smug face when you've dropped it in. <laughs> well, you know, what I want to make sure is that we do this efficaciously. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. I, I, I should just have a a dictionary to hang. You know, well, there you go. go, go, go. Let's, everyone's rushing, whether they're listening or viewing. They're onto their dictionaries, they're into Google. Go and play. But it, it's, it's, it, it's fun soaking up some of these words because it's unusual, you know, depending on where you are, for you to throw it into a sentence. Yeah, I, I like simple. Oh, it's my company name, Simplies. It's just a lot, <laughs> a lot. A lot easier, and, and everyone can understand you then. The common people hear you gladly. Oh, the simplifier, go. no doubt. Simplifier, indeed. Indeed. Um, so, look, I, and, and as I was alluding to, I think we should uh, interject something else, not within this, but I think maybe outside of this, just for a bit of fun. Um, yeah. Something I used to sit down and do with my dad uh, Regularly, we used to watch the Red Bull soapbox race. Oh yes, those um, crazy people. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And and be, being an engineer at heart, we used to sit there and sort of discuss, you know, the construction of it and the wheel sizes and the thickness of the wheels. And oh yeah, that's not going to make it. And oh, that's only got three wheels. You know, that's, that's going to come off at the bends. And um, we used to love it, and we used to have a great laugh. Um, <laughs> When they come flying off as well, or <laughs> that spectacular crash. So I think me and you should commentate on some of that. You those want us to actually make a cart and go down the hill? Pardon? You want us actually to create a cart and enter one of these competitions? Oh, no. Fly down a hill? I, I would love that. One, one well, day, that, I'm going to do... A, there's a challenge, isn't there? I, I want to do the, the London soapbox race, because well. that... That's normally at Ali Pali, Alexander Palace, and that hill is quite a quite a steep hill. <laughs> well, we can we, we can do it with 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 Case Mastermind at heart, and we can obviously dress accordingly. Indeed, indeed, we can wear our hats. We might have to tie them on though. To be fair. <laughs> but um, I pa power to weight ratio may be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> my, my 19 stone may be a disadvantage i'm not sure going down the hill at alexander palace will be a distinct <laughs> advantage <laughs> be to be fair. <laughs> we might get some speed up but i've i've seen it where people are rally drivers and they've had a go at it yeah. and they said it's more fun doing that than it is doing uh, it's, it's great fun. Car. It is good fun, yeah. So I definitely that's what on my my hit list of things to do. So we'll have to do that anyway, Melvin. We'll commentate on well, something. Well, let's 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 stuff. let's do some examples of it at, at some point. Indeed. But now we're gonna move on. We're gonna um we're gonna listen out, listen up and listen in, because it's now time for the book of the month. Did you see what I did there? I mean, the podcast. Yeah. Time, well, I was looking for a drum roll. Yeah, well, yeah. Oh, I thought it was quite dramatic anyway. So it um, was, yes. this month, it's my turn to choose a book. And I'm choosing the book, The Magic of Thinking Big 
by David Schwartz. It's um, a fantastic book and it's got a little bit of history for me um, because it was one of the first personal development books that I ever read. And I remember reading it, I was working at a little manufacturing company and I was probably about 22 or 23 years old. That's when I really sort of found the world of personal development and started to dig in and, and read more, more about it. So I got this book, so I'm sitting there in, in my tea break and in my dinner breaks reading this book. And of course, people are walking up and they're going, oh, what's that? what's that you're reading there then? And they sort of just lean over and lift up the book so they can see the cover and they were rolling their eyes they were tutting they were like looking up at the scene oh what's he on oh oh dear and i was quite shocked at the responses i got people were just sort of walking off almost in disgust or or laughing at me for wanting to make something out of my life um and and oddly enough when it comes to the, the directors at the company choosing someone to come and help in the office and work in the management of the company, it was me who got promoted to that role years later because I'd chosen to, to do something differently. So personal development is a great thing. And anyone who's listening to this hasn't quite got into it, well, we're giving you some ideas of some great books to read and, uh, I definitely recommend anybody to get into that because you can read all these novels and stories, but actually these books transform your mind, don't they, Melby? Yeah. You can't beat the reality of, let's say, re reading other people's experiences. Uh, the, the reference to those experiences is invaluable. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. So, um, and, and in this, in this, um, I want to talk about uh, stepping outside the flea jar, Melvin. Mm -hmm. and, and this was um, a story uh, that I heard um, about a flea circus. Mm -hmm. and basically, how to train a flea circus. Because I have seen flea circuses before. Um, there was one of the telly ones on the Paul Daniels show <laughs> many years ago. And they got these fleas to literally climb on things and do things, which was quite remarkable. But they have this in an open top box and they train the fleas in a jar with the lid on. And basically they jump and they hit the lid of the jar and they fall back down. And they're trying to escape Patrick. They're trying to escape. They are indeed. They're, and But, They've got a huge power in them that they can leap really high. Yeah. But this, this, the idea is that the lid on the jar is, is making them almost start to believe that they can only jump this high. So in the end, they jump just below the lid because they know if they jump any higher, they just hit this lid. So that is learned behavior that in the end, they jump just below the height of the lid of the jar. So that once you do that and leave them for so long, they then, you take the lid off the jar and they won't ju ever jump out of that jar because they've now limited their belief of what they can do. Yeah. So it was a really great way of explaining how human beings, we can have these limiting beliefs put on us and, you know, as children, we don't have those limiting beliefs. We have a few basic fears, which is like the fear of falling. Um, and I think it's the fear of loud noises, isn't it, Melvin? Is that the two? Yeah, fear of loud noises, yeah. That's it. And they're, they're basically danger response. You know, if you're going to fall, that's a, a, a body response to say, let's not fall over, let's try and stop that. Or loud noises, something is happening here and we need to respond, it's primitive responses. But we pick up learned behavior, um, you know, a typical um, 
belief is, uh, you know, speaking to other people and things like this. Don't talk to strangers. That's a popular one that people instill in their children for the right reason as well, isn't it? Of course. But, you know, uh, you can roll over superstitions all day long. Don't walk under a ladder. Why? Well, yeah, that's slightly different. But don't talk to strangers is is you know we, we're trying to protect children from obviously the, the, the wrong sort of people yeah so and you then have that ingrained into you in such a way that when you get into later life it, it's almost this limiting um belief that we have and again it becomes quite restrictive in our lives we, we then we then turn up at a uh, and and I, I would say this is point one, actually, because we do like to make points of this, don't we? So this is point one, really, which is limiting beliefs. And and we are, we're programmed, you know, don't talk to strangers. So you go, you, you as you're learning that and, and people are always reminding you of it, you... You, I, I remember being frightened. You know, if I lost my mum and dad and I walked off and there was no one there, I'd be scared stiff to talk to someone who I didn't know. Um, but it's become a learned behaviour. And then we come into things in later life. Um, and for example, we might get into business networking. And we go to a networking event and we don't know anybody there. So the first thing that we've got to do is go and talk to a stranger and so many of us are like whoa this is just like totally out of my comfort zone <laughs> what am I going to do and I think you know we we get those beliefs programmed into us don't we Melvin? Well we do to some extent I mean you, you're looking at it at its worst case scenario and extreme where obviously you know as a child talking to a stranger is the fact you know you might be in front of a paedophile or you might be in front of some kind of molesting type of individual, but that was never always the case. I mean, it was a one in a million chance, but yes, it was always a possibility because the media stories of local teaching and what have you bring certain uh, examples to the fore. So it puts the fear of God into mothers and children. And, you know, you do tell your child, I told my children, don't talk to strangers. But at some point, you have to then re-educate through the growth period as to reasons why you can talk to a stranger. And if you are in that uh, environment of a networking group and you've got that fear still instilled in you, yeah, you, you become that little quiet person in the corner or sat on your chair at the table, not really gaining benefit from the reason that you're there. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, where, where do you, where, where, when do you start that re-education to bring people a little bit more outgoing, which is obviously something that they have a, as a natural ability. Some people naturally can do it because they then, you know, at that, whatever the point in time is, they know when to or when not to say something to a completely unknown individual. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You learn it along the way, but you you find that you've come to a point where you've got to break out of that trap, don't you? And, you do. And, and move on into it. You do. I mean, you know, when, when I employed my very first employee, that was a traumatic period for me. But once you've done one, doing several hundred afterwards, which I did, was a piece of cake. Yeah. Absolutely, and, and and I think that's that's um, I think that's the real point. There is is to step out beyond that um, limiting belief that you have. Um, I know hey, Pat Patrick, if I may say, it's, it's like your first dive in a swimming pool. You get to the edge, you hover over the water. Yeah. It's all the same. It's that first, that very first time. It's the yeah. first kiss. It's the, fir it's the first kiss, first kiss with your girlfriend. 
it, it, you know, or, 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 or you know, whichever. The most important thing here is it's just overcoming that initial hurdle. Yeah, it's, it's good to win that fear, isn't it? And, and and like you said about the swimming pool, you know, the number of times when you go to the swimming pool and you see that person dip their toe in and, oh, it's really cold, and they're running around the edge, keep dipping their toe in, thinking that if you if you walk 10 metres around that way, it's going to be any different temperature yeah. whatsoever. But then, you know, someone else runs out and just does a full bomb straight yeah. into the water. And, yeah, there is a shock. But then you get used to it much quicker. It's it's yeah. like when you pull a plaster off, isn't it? You've got that person that's tugging at yeah. it and all the hairs are pulling off their arm again. Oh ah and then someone else just goes, no, no, no. And it's just done. And you know, it might hurt a little bit more, but it's you've yeah. just done it and got over it. And and I but, think But that, the, the, these the, this book that you're referring to here, the you know, the the, 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 the magic of thinking big, you know, it takes you through the journey. Of let's say from conception, from the it's in you know, initial period, through to being able to do all sorts of wonderful things. Is that correct? Indeed, indeed. So, so I think we're sort of uh, very cleverly moving on to point number two, which yeah. is stepping out of our comfort zone into our stretch zone, um, and. And this is the thing, we, we've all got inherent fears. Um, I think our biggest fears, the two biggest fears that people um, have is the first one is death. Um, and unfortunately, death by fire, which is quite a gruesome way to go. So quite understandably, that's... Uh, a bit morbid, Patrick, for a, a book review. It is, but that's, that's, that's the fact. I'm just quoting the facts, Melvin. I'm being that deep, gloomy figure that you put I, I, I think I think you should talk more about public speaking, Patrick. <laughs> well, yes, indeed. So the second fear is public speaking. They uh, beat me to it there. So, um, and, and because... Oh, sorry, my phone's made a noise. Um, so uh, it's it's being on that platform where you're open to criticism and showing your mistakes. You are when you are speaking in public, you're you're there. Everybody can see you. They can notice every little stammer, uh, every little action that you make, and you can become really conscious of that. You know, I know, I know we, we can stammer and stutter, uh, stammer and stutter when we do this, because I, I took some excerpts out last month and did the stutter rap. <laughs> um, we, we, we can play that again as a bit of fun, with a little yeah. bit of a mu music over the top. Well, we could, we could indeed, yeah. Um, <laughs> but, um, that's what happens when you're pub when you're speaking in public. I was petrified of it. I was really, really scared of that when I was at school. I couldn't do it uh, to save my life. And I, I would find a way to get off of school and um, avoid avoid it at all costs. And so when they booked up that public speaking moment, you know that. I, I, I probably wouldn't be in school that day, you know, I'd yeah. find some way of getting out of it. And it was only as I went on through life myself that um, I think I got involved in a, in a small business, side business that I was doing um, in, in a network marketing company but when I was about 22. And you had to do a bit of public speaking in that. So uh, someone just said, just do it and record yourself. So I did. And then, um, like you said earlier, the more you do that, the less harrowing it becomes. Um, and it's just for experience. It's just biting the, the initial bullet and pushing beyond your fear, isn't it, Melvin? That goes in any walk of life. It's... Uh, you you want to learn to drive. The first time you step into a car with an instructor next to you, if your stomach isn't churning, you're not human and you're not normal. 
Because the minute yeah. you start to touch the accelerator and take your foot off the clutch, if you're going the manual route like I did, my God, you know, you, I didn't know where to put myself. I was sweating. I was in a complete state of complete chaos in my head. I didn't know my left to my right. You know, it was just crazy, but only for about five, ten minutes. Then all of a sudden, it came naturally. It came to me. I then was obviously listening to the instructor, paying attention. And, you know, nine lessons later, I passed my test. You know, it's all about your focus and concentration. Yeah. Nine you lessons. Know? Yeah. That's a bit, that's a bit good. 17, 17 years old. Yeah, no, well, my father previously had let me do the gears and drive his van around a car park for a while so <laughs> I had a, bit of a, a little bit of a head start but the fact is is that you know you, 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 you got you got to have the want you obviously want the desire I mean what happened the first time you got on an aircraft how many screaming children did you hear behind you thinking oh god what are they what are they screaming for what did you do the first time you know we could all ask ourselves these questions yeah. yeah. How many people don't want to go up the top of a big building? How many people won't go in a glass lift that's on the outside of a building? Yeah. yeah. Vertigo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and and well, I mean, I I used to have an incredible fear of heights. I I could go about six rungs up a ladder, and then I was petrified, um, yeah. and I absolutely hated it. And then. I got a job in in the lift industry. <laughs> well, and, there you go. How bizarre. Yeah, and then um, I said, "Oh well, you know, I probably won't be working on the lifts." And I said, "Well, you know, you're gonna um, you're gonna be riding on the top of these lift cars." And I'll tell you, the first time I ever did, I was gripping onto these metal ropes as tight as I could. But when you get used to it when you realize how safe yeah. it can be and the safe practices that you need to do yeah and you understand and get an understanding of it you know there i was leaping around at 40 50 floors up um you know leaning over lift shafts but doing it in a safe way um yeah you know so it, it for but me you, are, are you a challenged person patrick is anyone that's listening and watching this, are they feeling challenged? Do they want to jump out 12,000 feet from a perfectly, wonderfully attired, beautifully mechanical aircraft with a parachute on their back? Yeah, I hope you're not loud. <laughs> well, listen, you can challenge me because I'm thinking, I always think, I'm thinking, what on earth would I want to do that for? <laughs> I know I, I I always want to do skydiving just for to to experience it, but um, I once done a free fall on some ride somewhere. <laughs> it was like quite uncomfortable, so I I, I I'm not so sure now. But <laughs> um, but it I thought you know stepping out of a, a comfort zone into a stretch zone, it's putting yourself in that place. To yeah. break free from 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 your fears, you've got to overcome a fear. And the only way you can overcome a fear mm. is by facing it head on, um, mm. and, and that's the only way. You know, no one else can help you on that. And and I think that's a really important. It's, thing. it's, it's no it's no different as a child. As another, one last example, being in the playground and being pushed around by a bully. The reason yeah. that guy's a bully is because he has more confidence than you or she yeah. for that matter. And the only way to overcome is that first push back. Yeah, that's right. Right. And uh, yeah, it, it, it's pushing yourself to that level. Um, and then, and then you realize it's not, it's never as bad as what you think. And I think, uh, the human mind is very good at going, oh, yeah, what if? And if you do this, this is going to happen. And then you, um, 
I think the words prevaricate, which is too big. Yeah. But uh, you, you think too much about it. We, we shall make a note of that one. Well, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, but you, you, you overthink a situation until you almost paralyse yourself with fear. Yeah. Um, it's like, you know, making um, phone calls. Um, I was never good at phone calls. Um, and it's just a case of, okay, well, I've got to do this. So pick up the phone, get on the phone, make the calls. And the more you do it, the more confident you become because you, you're you experiencing it, you're getting the feel for it and the understanding. Yeah. It becomes um, second nature in the end. Yeah, and, and, and I mean, I even noticed that if I don't do it for a long time and then go back to it, there's some of that initial apprehension returns yeah. so you've got to to keep at it and and just know that you, you can break through that barrier Definitely. which leads us nicely onto your next point i believe patrick it does melvin point number three which is who can help you grow and who is that person melvin we, we, we all make our individual decisions on that particular subject matter, do we not? Indeed we do. It's but, the answer. But with the, but, but with the aid of these authors, it kind of gives you stepping stones to assist you on that way forward. Yes, yes. Uh, but far too often people feel that someone else or something else has got to happen to make this thing happen. But when we realize that the only thing that's holding us back is ourselves, then that puts us fully accountable and fully responsible of how we're gonna get through this thing. Whatever that fear is, um, it's, it's down to us. And this is where the magic of thinking be, is expanding your mind and pushing away your limitations, your limiting and self-limiting beliefs. The that biggest thing in my opinion that somebody needs to be considering at this point in their journey is where does the buck stop? Yes. Yes, uh, accountability and responsibility we have to take that 100% fully if we're really going to become a success. We can, so, so often we can say, well, you know, this didn't happen because of this person said this or did this. Well, yeah, but you allowed that to stop you. You know, that, and that's where we've got to realise that when we can then always point it back to us all those excuses go out the window it's down to us absolutely so if we're going to fix it we've yeah. got to fix it um, make, make it make it work and get rid of the very 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 irritating phrase it wasn't my fault remember everybody it's always your fault and it's your responsibility to put it right that's right. Well, that's harsh, and that's a serious moment, but that's the reality of the big wide world out there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah someone can say, oh, look, it's this person's fault, and this is my company, but this member of staff did this and caused this problem. It's all their fault. It's your company. You're responsible over who you employ. You're responsible for training your staff. You know, everything points back to you and then you just say right let's deal with this there's no you have, to have, you have to have a plan always have a plan yeah definitely definitely and i think that's that's the problem out there today that people are looking externally for this input and help but the the help is from within if we need an answer the answer's out there um you know if if you thought of any question, pretty much you can Google that and get a plethora yeah. of, of information come up that you can look through to 
to, to get to that answer. It's there for you. Mm. But I think the trouble is these days, people are looking for, for shortcuts. Um, so, so, so Patrick, the book talks about gurus. So who's the guru? Well, no, uh, the, the gurus, um, what I was indicating to is there's gurus out there today um, that people will look to um, to be their solution. Okay. Um, there's a lot of these sales funnel courses out there, and some of them are great, okay? But some of them are marketed in such a way that, um, you know, follow this course and within three months you'll be earning six figures and, and all of these really sort of get rich quick um, titles for people to just try and take a shortcut and end up paying hundreds or thousands of pounds for courses and then once you've done that course then there's another further master super course that you then go on to this next tier that's more thousands of pounds or dollars or whatever you want to call it and small business owners just get pulled in to spend a lot of their money um, and it's there's no surprise that they go out of business i know the the statistics for businesses and everybody quotes different figures i've i've googled this so if it's wrong blame google because this is um this is what google said but 20% of small businesses fail in their first year. I think that might be slightly higher, but we'll go with that. 30% of small businesses fail in their second year, and 50% of small businesses fail after five years in business. They, they then go on to say that 70% uh, of small business owners fail in their 10th year in business. So that's 30% make it after 10 years. I've heard a lot of people quote a lot smaller, um, you know, that 10% make it uh, beyond their 10th year. And I can well believe it too. Um, there's so many distractions and so many things out there pulling people in for a quick fix um, and a quick way to get around things. But at the end of the day, there's only one real way to overcome something, and that is to hit it head on mm. and deal with it. Um, not to go round the mountain, but to go straight over the top. Um, yeah. Um, I think that's, you know, shortcuts just leads us to, um, to the wrong, the wrong solution. So, yeah, the book, the book basically says, you know, if we're that flea in the jar, just realise that, just. Just take a jump because you find you don't hit that lid anymore. The lid's off and you can go beyond what you feel that um, is your limit. You can go beyond that. And the human mind, the power of the human mind is so phenomenal, so amazing. It's not because this person's really got a great mind. We've all got a human mind. Anyone who's a human has got a human mind and it's got massive capabilities but what we can do is put a limitation on it and that's where the problem is isn't it Melvin? It is but I just want to draw your uh, your comments I want, to, I want to just gloss over what you just made a point of all the failure statistics we spoke about fear earlier the fear of failure is something that people in this big wide world have obviously, and for all the right reasons, have immense consideration to. The fear of failure can be disastrous for a lot of people. And what you find if you've had failure is how much more strong you can find yourself in finding the ability to overcome and learn from that failure. Yeah. Just, from yes. a, just from a statistical point of view, and I, I don't know the numbers and I don't know all the people, but 
People can look this up on Google or wherever they wish to do their research. Most successful business people have gone through failure. In some cases, more than once. Definitely. <laughs> so to overcome that fear, learn by the mistakes of others, as well as your own errors. Do things legally and correctly. Don't try and do underhanded fixes. Do everything in the proper manner. And that learning curve will stand you in great solidity and immense confidence for the, the next phase of your life. Yes. I think it's important to point that out, Patrick. People, yeah, you know, you, you're either winning or you're learning. Mm. You're never losing. No, that's right. I think you know, when we do get something wrong um, and we learn from it, and I think that's the important thing, you know, learn from that mistake. Because uh, if you just go and do the same thing wrong again, you know, it, it, that's not a really great way to... Uh, no. Well, then you need to seek, seek advice at that point. Seek advice. Indeed. It, it, will, it will help to share, buddy up, take some, take some, let's say, some common sense that you know to be right, but you're, you fail in, you know, in your application of learn it, learn it, overcome. That's right. And, and mix, mix with people that are they're on the same journey as you. There's... Yeah. Um, and I think that, that works in so many ways because one, they've got similar aspirations to you. There's no point telling someone who, you know, feels that being employed and having a safe salary job is the right way to go and then sharing with them that you've got, you know, these great dreams and ambitions of building a big business. They just like look at you and go, you know, what, what do you want to do that for? That doesn't sound very safe and secure, you know. Yeah, but but hang on a minute, Patrick, if you're going to share your success stories with other people and they're looking at you, you know, in admiration to some extent and they're thinking, well, you know, what are you trying to tell me? Don't just talk about you. Talk about how you can help them, bring them on the journey, help them come forward. Yeah, that's right. But, but, but the, the thing what I'm trying to, to say there is, Melvin, when you've got someone who's got the same aspirations as you, you know, we can talk about business and what we want to achieve. And we, we can bounce off each other because we're both looking in a similar direction. Mm, yeah. um, and, and that's where I think it's important to share and, and with, with people that have got those similar aspirations and and to come on that journey with you um and that's the important part i think and that's the way you can grow mm. or bounce things off the right people um as as you've alluded to well it's always useful to mix with like-minded people it's always mm. even more useful to mix with people who are even more successful than you are no matter what state of your journey you're in yeah very true, very true, and you know, birds of a feather, but birds of a feather flock together. And yeah, uh, yeah if uh, if you're an eagle and you hang around with a bunch of chickens, you're you're soon gonna uh, be walking around the, the chicken yard pecking with the others, uh, thinking there must be something wrong here. And you know, you've got to 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 get with those people that are going in the right places definitely um which which i th i think melvin that that is is a, is a great segue for us to talk about case mastermind because well we can i mean i mean would you like i mean is there any summary you'd like to give on on, on the actual book in itself before we do that um summarize a little i think i think uh, one story that um that I uh, have heard many times sums it up quite well, and, and I know you, you've heard it as well because Gary Price mentioned it at one of our meetings once, and that's the story of the crab basket, yes, and how they catch these crabs. And 
sorry to those that are listening that have probably heard this story a lot of times because there's always going to be a first time of hearing this story for everyone um so if it's here please comment below and tell us how wonderful you thought the story was um but well, please comment and say we don't want to hear any more of patrick's stories <laughs> That, that might evoke a lot more comments. <laughs> it might do. It might do, but let's give them the option. <laughs> um, but the, so the way they catch these certain type of crabs is they put the bait in this basket and the crab um, that gets in there to get this bait and then all of a sudden all the other crabs go, what's going on here? And they all start gathering round. And once, once the bait's been eaten, all these crabs are in this basket. Now they can get out of this basket, but there's a mentality that the fishermen have, have uh, discovered over the years of these crabs that if one of them tries to climb out of the basket, the others will pull that crab back in. Like, what, what, what are you doing? And they will, if they continue to try and climb out of the basket in the end, um, they'll pull that crab to pieces, quite brutal. So the crabs quickly learn that I'm not climbing out of here, I'm staying in here. And then they just pull the basket up eventually and there's loads and loads of these crabs in there. More and more crabs would be climbing into the basket while they're down there. There's not even any food in there. They're just like, oh, what's going on in here? But it's just that mentality. And it's like us in our lives, we want to break free from the norm. And there's so many people around us. So we, we don't want to do that because that's not safe. That's not the normal. That's not, you know, the, the same routine. And they've got a genuine love for us and they genuinely care for us. But actually, that love and care is, is not helpful to us because they're trying to pull us back and hold us back. So very often, there's limitations from around us, but the responsibility lays with us. We don't have to listen to that. We don't have to take heed to that. If we know where we want to go and what we want to achieve, then we need to focus on that journey. We don't want to be listening to the distractions on the left or the right. And we want to walk that journey with the right people, with the right mindset, so we can get there. And, and that's where that book pointed me to. It pointed me to, if you want to succeed in life, then you go make it happen. If you want a pay rise, don't ask for one. Work hard for one. And you know what? When I read that book, I'd only ever asked my boss for one pay rise, and I didn't get it. <laughs> and I never asked for a pay rise again. And I got substantial ones over the years because I worked for it. And that was that book, Switch My Mindset. Don't go around demanding. Go around and prove what you're worth. And I think that's um, essential for anyone. Yeah, beautifully summarised, Patrick. Have you any points to add to that, Melvin? No, I just want to wipe the tears away from my eyes. Uh, <laughs> and we should go on to Case Mastermind. <laughs> oh, was that very emotional? It was, I mean, it, it was moving. It was moving. But it, it took away my siege mentality. <laughs> Your siege mentality, okay. Um, so, yes, so Case Mastermind, where we was talking, and we were perfectly segueing in before you maybe summarised there. But um, the, the crab... I'm not going to... I'm not apologising. The, the, the crab basket, it, it's breaking away from the crowd, coming aside to a group of people that want to succeed, want to make a difference. Um, you know, there's people out there now 
uh, they might be in a job and you know there's nothing wrong with being in a job you know mm. any of our comments there's nothing wrong with being in a job um, and that suits a lot of people and they can achieve great things within that job and career mm. fantastic you know there's there's nothing wrong with any of that but there's some great people out there solicitors doctors and everything else um but getting together with a group of people that have similar aspirations to you, stepping out into the business world, um, it's refreshing and you can bounce ideas off of people and they don't laugh at them, they don't rubbish them, but they contribute to them. And that's where the masterminding that we do in case um, people come away refreshed because it's not a, a networking group where we're uh, promoting our business, where we're pushing our business or um, trying to sell to each other. We're trying to help and support each other on a journey. Um, and, you know, I've had fantastic reports from people that, that really love it. And, um I find that encouraging. Have you got any any thoughts there, Melvin? No. Let's talk about case, baby. Talk about case. Oh, okay. So case itself. So if anybody wants to uh get involved uh with case, um we've put in the links um attached to whatever you're listening to. So if you're watching the video or listening to the audio, um, we've got some links in there for our website, uh, for our Eventbrite page where we hold regular events. Um, currently during this sort of lockdown phase that we're going through, we're doing a lot of it online. Um, then there's physical meetings that we do too. Um, there's our YouTube uh, channel, and um, have a look at those links. Follow us, see, uh, see if it's something for you. We'd love to hear from you, love to hear your comments. And um, we'd like to ask for your feedback on this episode because all of our meetings that we hold are built on feedback. We ask our members for regular feedback and we build those meetings based around the feedback. Um, and we love your feedback on here. You know, is it is it great that we wore these hats this month or is it absolutely awful? I, I, I don't expect any podcast listeners to comment on that. But, you know, is what we're saying, um, is, are, are we not getting to the point enough? Do, do, do people enjoy us um, talking and expounding on points? We'd love to hear because it's really important for us. And there's um, the word of the month this month. If you um, use this in your feedback, there will be a prize. Um, you can win a prize. You are, you are allowed to sort of get a bit excited at this point, Melvin, and say, ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was, I'll tell you that. That, that's really encouraged everyone, I'm sure. Oh, I'm certain. Um, but we, we will review the comments that we receive, both of them. And um, and and whoever's mentioned that comment, the best review will uh, receive a prize that month. So um, there's normally only two comments. So you've got a 50% chance of winning if you do leave a comment. So... Uh, that would be really. I, th I think you're you're thinking rather wishfully there, Patrick. <laughs> well, you and me will probably make one, will we? <laughs> well, well, no, I, I think I make a comment, but you can't be bothered. So. Uh, <laughs> that's why I, 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 I've I've got the word of the month, so it's difficult because I'd be cheating. <laughs> yes, but the word of the month isn't going to be the the long word. You can put the long word in because that'd be even more impressive. But um, the word for this month, uh, taken from uh, the book, is thinking big. Well, that's two words, I know. But if you can put thinking big 
in your um, response. We'll, we'll look through those comments and uh, we'll, we'll see and we'll, we'll pick the best one. And they'll get a prize. So that's all very exciting stuff. Don't you think there, Melvin? Well, I just would just add one last thing is do not make it too garrulous. <laughs> I'm sure once they understand what that means, Melvin, they will try their best not to. So, oh, I'd like to see how many people feed into our uh, respawn bar. What garrulous means? Indeed, indeed. Because we do like people's feedback. Um, it's really good to get it. It helps us to reach out to more people because there's people um, out there looking out for help. And as I said earlier, there's... There's a lot of people out there that, that catch you out and you end up start paying huge sums of money for information. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I just like people to be aware that there are ways and means of doing that without forking out hundreds and thousands of pounds. And when people are starting out and they haven't got much money behind them or they've got to use their money very wisely we have to be very careful what we do don't you agree melvin well it's all about the wise men isn't it and the wise ladies and just generally the wise people where if you find yourself in a circle where there is generosity a lot of the information that you desire and require is available for not a lot of money, if no money at all. So you don't jump into the first fire. You have a look around. Yeah. Because you know what happens when you jump into the fire, Patrick? You do, you get burned. You get burned, yeah. That is very true. And yeah, that's right. So I, I think we've done everyone's head in now, don't you? <laughs> all right, okay. Fair enough. All right, well, we'll bring uh, this month to a close. So for some, there's a sigh of relief. To some, there's a, a sigh of, of, of regret that it, it, it's had to finish and they've got to wait till next month. But um, for now, it's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from him. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Bye-bye. So folks, thank you for joining us on our broadcast. This has been brought to you by Case Mastermind, the brainstorming mastermind group that you, the listener, can be a part of. Just follow the links in the notes attached to our website and the bright pages to see what events you can join us at. If you enjoy our content, please share and review. One of the talented people who leave us a great review with that month's watchword that's given out on our monthly broadcast will be selected for the prize. If you would like to hear more, please hit the subscribe button so you can hear more from the Case Mastermind team. So remember folks, listen out, listen up, and listen in. See you soon.